All right, so this is a beautiful calculus exercise that I saw a long time ago and I wanted to share it with you. It's an interesting question, when does a polynomial have a root or a solution? So here we have this polynomial, which is a1 plus a2x plus a3x squared all the way up to a and x to the n minus one. And this is telling us, this theorem is telling us that this polynomial has a solution in the closed interval zero one assuming this condition is satisfied on its coefficients, that a1 plus a2 over 2 plus a3 over 3, all the way up to a n over n is equal to 0. And we're going to prove it. It's such an elegant argument. I love it. And I'm just going to dive into it. We're going to define a beautiful function. It's going to capture everything we need. And this is where math is so creative. We're going to define f of x is going to equal to a1x plus a2x squared over 2 plus a3x cubed over 3 and so on and so forth, all the way up to a n x, x to the n over n. That's going to be our function. And what's special about this function? It's going to be very relevant to our problem. There are three things we need to know about our function. Number one is it's differentiable on the closed interval 0, 1. It's after all a polynomial. Okay, so it's differentiable. The second thing we know is that f of 0 is actually equal to 0. Now we don't know anything about our original polynomial that we want to show has a root in 0, 1. We don't know about what it is at x equals 0 because it's equal to a1 and we have no information about a1 alone, only this relation between the coefficients. But for our f of x, we know f of 0 is 0. We know f of 1 is just going to equal to a1 plus a2 over 2 plus a3 over 3 all the way up to a n over n, which is just this quantity here. So that's where we constructed the function. f of 1 is also equal to 0. So it's a differentiable function on the closed interval 0, 1, and it has these two properties. So then we know there is going to be some point, and this is just Rolle's theorem, there's going to be some point where the derivative is equal to 0. If its value at 0 and its value at 1 are both 0, what goes up must come down. So whatever it does, because it's differentiable at some point, its derivative has to be 0. And what is its derivative? Well, f prime of x is just going to equal to a1 um, plus a2x plus a3x squared, all the way up to a n x to the n minus 1. That's going to be our derivative of our function. And that's so beautiful because that's actually our original polynomial. So we know now that our original polynomial, being the derivative, has a real root in the interval 0, 1. Now another fun way of looking at this, I'll just briefly mention, is that you can think of this quantity here as being the integral from 0 to 1 of this polynomial. Because basically the antiderivative of this polynomial is this one, because f, f of x, its derivative is the original polynomial. So if you take the antiderivative and then you plug in 1 and plug in 0 and subtract them, you get the definite integral from 0 to 1, which is going to be 0. And we know that the definite integral of this polynomial is the signed area under the graph of the polynomial from 0 to 1. That has to be 0. That means the polynomial has to be 0 somewhere. Otherwise, it would be entirely above the x-axis or entirely below the x-axis. In either case, the signed area would not be 0. Another intuition, but it all boils down to Rolle's theorem. Now, all you need on Rolle's theorem is going to pop up on the screen here. It's a video I've done on my channel. Everything about Rolle's theorem, intuition plus proof, you're going to love it. And here's another video you're going to love, which is a characterization of which functions are equal to their own derivative. A four minute proof. It's one of the most popular videos on my channel. It's understandable to all beginning calculus students. No ODEs, no fancy theory, simple and elegant. Check it out here.